didn't want to talk to us for this piece. They didn't want to give us a statement. They instead referred us to their report released earlier this year into missing and murdered indigenous women. 42 missing or murdered Aboriginal women and still no answer. Vice Canada travels with an ex-Mounty set on bringing justice to the dozens murdered along British Columbia's Highway of Tears. And we welcome the producer of this documentary, Alia Davidson. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. Can I guess that part of the reason why you decided to get involved in this project is that there are 42 missing or murdered women along this highway, but because they're Aboriginal, no one gives a damn? Was that part of the motivation? That was a huge part of the motivation. And, you know, even that number, 42, we don't know if that's the number. The RCMP says it's 18. UN says another number, Amnesty International has another number. We don't even know that basic fact because no one's been following up, no one has been checking on these murders that have been going on. It's a shock that in this country this would be going on and yet police are not all over this like bark on a tree. They don't. Well, you know, the RCMP set up a task force to address this, this stretch of the highway in 2006 yeah. called Epana, but they've, they've had their funding cut by 80%, so we don't actually know what kind of police work they're doing, if any, at this point. And, you know, they didn't want to talk to us, so we, we still don't know. And yet demands have been made on the federal government to do something, and, and this being in the midst of a, or the tail end of the campaign, you would think this would have been a larger issue. And I think attempts were made to make it so, but it didn't happen. Well, I'm even, you know, for Vice, this documentary was a part of a searcher series that was yeah. trying to make missing and murdered Indigenous women an election issue, and, you know, it was part of our election coverage. We asked, you know, Trudeau and Mulcair about missing and murdered yeah. Indigenous women. We asked Stephen Harper about it as well when we followed him mm -hmm. on his plane. It's something we're really trying to make. We're going to show highlights of Highway of Tears in a second, but first I want to deal with the issue of Ray. He's the ex-RCMP officer, and he's got a very interesting way of doing some investigating. He's pretty blunt, isn't he? He is, yeah. I mean, he's this grandfatherly, almost folksy guy, but he is very, very direct. And he, you know, he asks direct questions, and he took us to some really strange and, you know, creepy places. And that's those are the kinds of things you would expect police to be doing. But he was the only one yeah. out there. Highway of Tears. Let's take a look at one of one or two of the excerpts. People are going missing. Kids are going missing. Women are going missing. It doesn't matter who they are or, or what their race is or or anything. It shouldn't matter, especially in, in Canada. We're here in Prince George, which is the largest city in northern British Columbia. About 70,000 people live here. And this is also the edge of what people call the Highway of Tears, um, which is Highway 16. 724 kilometers between here and Prince Rupert on the coast. And if you go by the RCMP numbers, nine women have gone missing or been murdered along that specific stretch of highway. If you ask First Nations groups or just the communities along this route, they'll tell you that number is much higher. What have you heard about this place? Well, I have heard a rumor that some um, of the missing people may have been disposed of in a beehive burner. And what's a beehive burner? A beehive burner used to be used by mills to dispose of um, wood chips. So they would blast them in, burn them up, and then, I guess, haul the ashes away. I know that there was...